during the time that we've been doing this for around 11, 12 years, uh, we sort of mapped out the, the Nordic mainframe market, uh, the context of, of uh, uh, our, our uh, uh, market insights today is, is, is uh, very much related to, to the Nordics here. So uh, of the around 600,000 MIPS that we have, uh, that we are sort of uh, tracking in the Nordic market, uh, we have uh, uh, with a couple of recent editions, uh, we're sort of covering around 500,000 of those. Uh, and that spans all the major vendors uh, who are present in the Nordic market. Uh, of course, IBM, uh, but also quite a lot of other major outsourcers are uh, uh, con uh, are contenders in 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 um, making up the the uh, the Nordic mainframe market. So based on this uh, sort of data, we try to we we approach this from a statistical uh, background, which is what we do. We try to propose what the uh, pricing is made up of, and the more data you have, uh, the better opportunities you have to to uh, 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 to gather. Uh, insights and also isolate the various drivers. Uh, and the reason why that's important is that, that uh, any client will, will enter into complex negotiations on the software side and on the, on the, on the service side. Uh, so, so understanding that is, uh, is key. And I'll move into uh, a few more details on that. Um, a few notes on the sort of the, the, the uh, Nordic outsourcing market is that uh, IBM has become an increasingly dominant player. And not Providing and operating uh, the mainframes, uh, and some of the more uh, major shifts, and many of you, of course, know of this. But but uh, the various consolidation of 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 the, of the vendor market, where every and KMD, uh, for example, were taken over at least operations wise by IBM, um, and this sort of led to to the uh, competition authorities having quite a lot of uh, taking quite a lot of interest into this. Uh, and ultimately me leading to the fact that the T Systems, which has a I think around a billion uh, euro uh, a year um, mainframe uh, portfolio, that that was uh, they were not able to take over that part of the uh, uh, the market simply because it would uh, consolidate the, the market too much, and and there was a, a concern that the prices would be affected as a result. Uh, so, but uh, even though the T System deal f sort of fell apart. Uh, generally, um, IBM has been seeking to, to try to sort of consolidate its position in, uh, in the Northern European uh, market. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there, there are not opportunities to, to sort of optimize what you have already. Uh, so so uh, um, looking into this, uh, even though uh, the number of players is, is uh, reduced slightly, uh, uh, what we generally see is actually that the mainframe prices uh, generally decline with three to four percent, uh, four and a bit percent if you take sort of the, the, the longer perspective on this. Uh, and this is uh, driven uh, by various factors, but uh, one of the big ones is actually that, that uh, quite a lot of the, the major players such as um, the big banks, financial institutions, uh, large scale retailers, uh, and, and the um, and to uh, us maybe a small, uh, slightly smaller extent, uh, the, the, uh, the public sector uh, have adopted uh, IFL engines and, and set on Linux. Uh, um, and that actually makes up quite a big part of what the, the new uh, MIPS that, uh, uh, that I've been making up around 32% in 2019. So, so, uh, so there is actually the, even though uh, uh, Gartner and, and many others have, have sort of uh, uh, on several occasions uh, made the statement that, that the mainframe is on its way out. Uh, we do see sort of a, a slight decline in number of installations, but actual number of MIPS is, is generally going up. So, so it seems like a, a healthy market, at least from, from what we see. Um, so, so, uh, so it's important also, I mean, the, the reason for that, that set on Linux is becoming so interesting is, is uh, sort of the same development that we, uh, that we saw with, with uh, specialty engines such as SIP before that. Uh, it's a way of, of improving the price performance of, of, uh, of the mainframe. And that is why it's being pursued, especially by the large installation. Um, I think uh, what is important here is, of course, that when we talk about mainframe pricing, uh, 
generally, the, for the most part, we're talking about IBM mainframes. So there is a few Fujitsu BS2000 installations, but basically it's an IBM market. Uh, and that means that uh, 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 what we spend the most time on is, is generally understanding the software. Uh, because that's, uh, for many clients, I'll make up to, um, well, anywhere from 45, but, but generally all the way up to 80% of the total cost will be related to software. So a lot of the optimization efforts uh, that we have are uh, directed at optimizing that structure. Uh, optimizing the overall uh, uh, quantities and volumes and, and managing peaks. Well, Stephen will tell you more about that and SMT data is of course uh, uh, um, have a very, very strong team in, in sort of investigating that. So we'll, we'll spend a bit more time on, on actually the price dynamics and, and also how we approach that in, in getting the best deals uh, with, with software vendors and, 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 uh, and for the raw service, uh, the actual MIPS uh, pricing for, for, the, for, the, for the mainframe capacity. Uh, but aside from software, I mean, it's also important that we understand the, the scope of the labor and, and uh, I'll get back to that in a second, but, but, but that's a big, uh, big part of this. Um, the hardware and housing costs are slightly uh, smaller, so generally, uh, say, 10, 20% is sort of making up the facility management and, and, and uh, the actual hardware. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the hardware isn't important because we, a huge part of the discussion around software and also the uh, metrics, which I'll get back to in a second, uh, revolves around the generation of, of the mainframe that you're on. Um, so um, if we sort of move into to, uh, um, the, um, yeah, the core uh, drivers here, we sort of try to separate the, uh, the various areas that we need to investigate in order to, to come up with uh, what is the optimal way of, of buying whatever consumption you have right now and whatever software stack you have on top of that. Uh, so um, specialty engines uh, and, and uh, is of course a way of offloading, but uh, today we'll spend quite a lot of time on the, uh, cons a bit on the consumption patterns and metrics only from the price side, uh, but just showing how much, it, uh, how big a difference that, that can make. And then there is an, an ongoing and, and the tricky part is of course in, in managing the peaks and, and Steve will, will address that. Um, but also, I mean, there can be some very uh, both tactical and strategic considerations around uh, the third-party software. Uh, uh, so I can see that's sort of uh, uh, the formatting is a bit off here, but basically that's sort of the middle one. Uh, and and third-party in our view is, is specialty uh, IBM software, but also all the usual suspects, CA, BMC, uh, Software AG, and some of those. Uh, and I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, but the, 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 once we sort of understand the stack, that's important and we need to separate these discussions in order to have a, a reasonably, uh, a, a, well, a good discussion, constructive discussion with the outsourcer because uh, uh, clients want transparency, but if uh, uh, outsourcers are supposed to, to move on pricing due to developments in the market or uh, changes in consumption pattern, well, we need to, sh to share that uh, transparency with them. Uh, that makes for the, by far the best process uh, and, and it's key in, in, in making sure that the, uh, that the relationship, which is generally a long-term uh, long one, isn't affected by, by, by the price discussions. Um, so sort of moving into the six main driver, drivers that, that we uh, try to, to uh, uh, decompose this, uh, all this complexity into. Uh, then the first one is, is, is uh, we sort of need to understand, well, what kind of software is in the, this is in the sort of standard package. Uh, what is the content of the, of the third party software? And of course you, you have software lists. I think that the optimization comes into play when we talk about what are actually the various options of buying this software. Uh, and that there, that is a very long uh, list of, of uh, various metrics that you might want to consider. Um, MSUs and, 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 uh, MIPS being being one of them, but for some of the tail vendors, you'll have different metrics uh, and so on. So so it's a big part of it, and, and understanding uh, what's going on and what is the the discount you should be getting for your IBM software. Well, that comes into sort of level number two, which is is the hardware and understanding. Okay, are we on a shared platform, and, and how many ill parts are we uh, are we running, and and how do specialty engines fit into the mix? 
Um, and maybe just skipping a few here, uh, not because they're not important, but it's, uh, the, the link to the consumption pattern uh, is a big part of also uh, discussing uh, the price. Uh, so I'll not dive into to, to all the details, but it's very important that, that the metric you have in, the, in, in your contract uh, is not necessarily uh, if, your consumption, if your consumption changes significantly, you might want to reconsider that. I'll come back to that in a bit more detail. Um, and then, of course, it's important that the, the, uh, you understand the scope. Uh, there, are pretty, there are various ways of running a mainframe. Uh, and uh, I think one thing we'd like you to, to say from this seminar, and I think most of you will know this, but uh, a MIPS is not a MIPS. Uh, so so uh, uh, if you can st uh, start uh, with that, then you're, you're better off in almost all the discussions you'll have subsequently. Uh, and that is, of course, because the, the operational scope uh, is different. Um, and and the, the scope of batch uh, is typically one that varies quite a lot. So you want to understand uh, what part of the batch operations is actually driving the price. Uh, and I think uh, there are two sort of scenarios here. So one is uh, where the, the, uh, uh, the batch, uh, when you're sort of transitioning between vendors or between platforms, then there is uh, uh, some work going into that. But basically in terms of pricing, uh, which is what we primarily focus on, it is actually the stability and the number of failed jobs that are driving efforts on the vendor side. Uh, so you want to uh, have a, an educated discussion around how stable are these environments. Uh, and also, if over time they've become very stable, well, then that might, might make for a case where you uh, revisit the, the cost of, of op operating the various ill paths uh, and the, the labor cost going into that because over time you would expect a slightly smaller team, of course, still t while uh, uh, making sure that SLAs are met uh, as they should be. Um, so, in addition to this, we sort of have the fourth one here, which is around the commercial risk. Uh, and this is an area that's generally not very well understood uh, by, by um, um, quite a lot of the, the, the sales teams today have, have a, a slightly scattered experience with selling the mainframes. I'm not saying that's always the case with the vendors, but, but, but given that it's a relatively small market with a hardcore group of, of uh, uh, clients and, and um, uh, there's typically a lot of very skilled technical staff uh, at the vendors. But, but one of the issues uh, in these discussions is that some of the commercial risks that a vendor needs to capitalize uh, is not transparent in the pricing discussion. Uh, so that's sort of left to chance. If, if you go too far on asking for uh, punitive provisions or um, uh, uh, flexibility in terms of, of uh, uh, scaling uh, your, your consumption up or down, uh, that has a sort of structural programmatic uh, response from the vendors. And that may, may uh, uh, you might end up in a stalemate where actually changing, a, tweaking a few commercial risk elements uh, or param uh, parameters uh, would, would make this a much more constructive and an easy discussion to have with, with your outsourcer. So, so, uh, so it's important to, to sort of consider uh, the commercial risk. We try to isolate that and, and, and that's because also the math around this is different. So what we're treating this is, is actually the likelihood that this uh, contractual uh, implication is, is actually needed. Uh, so what is the risk of, of actually uh, being faced with uh, SLAs that are breached and so on. Um, so when we talk to a vendor, uh, so this is a, a, a relatively big uh, um, uh, case sort of scaled down to a thousand years, but basically the, the idea here is that we need, in order to have a discussion around price, we need to break down the MIPS price into its various components. So we'll have the IBM software, CA, uh, third-party software, and then we'll of course have hardware, uh, sort of uh, uh, the hardware MIPS, uh, which is uh, again uh, typically a very small part of, uh, of this. Uh, but breaking down to this sort of level, and, and the way we go about it, this is you're not supposed to, to read this is in font three, I think. But, but the point here is that you need to decompose it into all the various uh, uh, software elements, MLC, cost for DB2, and, 
uh, and kicks and so on, and all the instances and, and how we have approached uh, the disaster recovery and all, all these sort of engines. So, so um, we've done it this way uh, and learned uh, over the past 10-12 uh, years that uh, having maximum transparency on this makes for a much, much better discussion. Uh, and it sort of removes the, 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 the friction and you'll also understand that in some areas it will be hard for the outsourcer to actually accommodate that. Some of them will have, if we go back just to, to the CA part for example, uh, there is, uh, that was why there is a tactical, a strategic element, element to this, is that, that for example CA software, um, if you, some vendors will have a global contract on that, others will have a regional and some will have a, a client a sort of case by case uh, sort of engagement with CA Broadcom. So, so uh, as this, uh, well, CA is uh, one vendor, but but they can be tricky to manage. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, but but um, uh, you need to manage these vendors, and there are differences in what the various uh, mainframe providers are actually able to offer you. So, if you have a huge CA installation, you might want to consider one. Uh, who has a global uh, contract uh, and if your current vendor has that but you're holding the CA licenses that's typically an opportunity to to save some money uh, uh, and, and maybe have some, some predictability in your budget as well. Um, I think another important part and, and I think most of you will know this but, but that is typically where uh, uh, even for the very mature clients what we generally see is that the uh, there is a poor understanding of just how big an impact uh, the software has on the overall pricing. Uh, and the, the MIPS price discussion is typically kicked off prematurely before you actually have a, a full understanding of, of uh, all the products involved. So in this case here we have uh, a big bank with more than 800 uh, products across 22 mainframe uh, software provi uh, providers. And then you have a medium sized insurance company with 75 products and six vendors. Uh, so it's quite different scenarios. Uh, and, uh, and as you'll see, there's sort of these, quite a lot of vendors, and uh, we also have SMT data here, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, which we of course highly recommend uh, for, for, for managing your peaks. But, but it's just to say that it's a complicated, uh, it's a complicated, uh, um, it's a complicated landscape. And if you don't, if you're not able to provide transparency on this, and enter into a discussion where you might want to consider substitution of products, uh, well, then you'll have a, a harder time reaching a uh, good result with, uh, in your next uh, mainframe renegotiation. Um, I think one of the areas that is generally overlooked uh, is, is sort of the specialty engines, uh, and these are generally the engines, so SIP processors and IFLs, uh, and generally, there is a discussion around uh, how we buy this, uh, uh, which I think is, is neglected in most cases. Uh, and uh, I think this is where the clients at least would benefit from understanding the basic structure of, of uh, the engine uh, methodology used by IBM. Uh, and in many of these cases, if you have a significant, for example, SIP consumption, which is the example we give here, uh, buying that, the, the, Traditional way of buying, buying that is a uh, where you pay a percentage of your GP MIPS uh, as the sort of uh, as the price for for a SIP uh, MIPS, but consumption sort of reaches a, a a certain level. Well, then you will generally be better off by adopting a sort of an engine based purchase of this, uh, whatever T-shirt size uh, uh, they come, and that will differ across the the. Uh, mainframe type you have, uh, uh, and, and, and so whether it's a business class or enterprise class uh, uh, mainframe, uh, but also uh, between generations, so uh, uh, EC12 versus C13 or 14 or 15, uh, that has a that has an impact. So so this is not uh, you'll not be able to extrapolate this for all cases, but this is the example for a set 13 uh, 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 scenario where uh, the marginal costs in an engine based scenario is much lower than buying it as a sort of say 25 or 30 percent of the GP MIPS. And the reason why this is, uh, is fair is that there are no software charges associated with the SIP. So we want to make sure that we, uh, that we use that. Uh, so this is purely a pricing perspective because there is uh, other co uh, considerations in terms of performance. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, and uh, to highlight that, I think you, you should definitely talk to SMT about that. But uh, in terms of pricing, this is an area that is generally overlooked. Uh, because if you're able to f uh, use the full engine, well, then it's the generally a much cheaper way of buying uh, SIP capacity. Um, then I spent just a few minutes on on uh, sort of uh, what the metric is that that uh, that you use. It it has a big impact on on um, on the price you pay. Uh, so uh, one of the big uh, issues generally is that that there is relatively little uh, or the discussions around how this is described is generally um, imprecise and and they don't get the amount of attention that they need uh, and that generally leads to a lot of friction later on in the relationship once the uh, client uh, or the vendor is stuck with a metric that that doesn't fit the underlying cost profile um, we try to approach this in a sort of a mathematical way. So, so we, uh, this is also what is used by, by quite a lot of vendors. So we're talking about a percentile and a measurement window. So, so it's just basically uh, listing all the observation in a histogram and then uh, selecting, dividing those into 100 percentiles. And then you discuss how peak sensitive should that be? And are you measuring during daytime or 24 uh, seven? But uh, the reason why you need to look into this is that the difference between um, adopting sort of a say 95th and 95th percentile uh, in during business hours versus uh, a four hour rolling average uh, interpreted in a slightly more extreme way is uh, is huge. Uh, so the impact of that will in many cases be, be more than 50%. Uh, for this particular client, uh, the invoicing was was a bit creative, uh, so that was actually the absolute peak in one single hour, which was uh, which was used for invoicing, uh, and and in this case, um, uh, the savings were um, I think around uh, 65 million Norwegian kroner for just a nine month period. So it's it's it it ends up being quite a lot of money. Uh, and of course, it's an issue if your stakeholders are not expecting that that your uh, your MIT consumption will balloon, uh, and and that will happen in some areas. Some of these will uh, converge on each other, um, some of the metrics. But in certain scenarios, they will of course peak. Um, and then uh, separating some of these effects is important to have that discussion with uh, uh, with the vendor. So we generally try, try to separate sort of the price and the quantity effect. So if you have a change in in the uh, uh, if we have a change in the quantity, uh, well then we want to isolate that from the price discussion because it's two separate things, uh, and we sort of typically managing the vendor at, at two different levels, uh, capacity management. Um, uh, team is different from the commercial team uh, structuring the, the, the basic uh, uh, the basic contract. So you want to separate those. Uh, another area I think I'll just touch on, which is generally overlooked, is that uh, we see many many uh, uh, clients uh, moving from from uh, uh, ESET 12 to set 13 or set 13 to 14 and 15 without getting uh, or sharing uh, at least part of the, the uh, reduced MLC and AWLC charges. I'm mentioning these, I know there, is a, there are many, <laughs> many discount schemes from IBM and, and also uh, uh, CA and BMC and uh, AEC and so on and so on to consider, but these are some of the most important ones because these affect the, the base uh, uh, software which affects the most MSUs and most MIPS uh, so, so you should really consider whether there is uh, a, a, a gain sharing of sorts here. Uh, but generally, what we see is uh, there is no gain sharing, and the uh, the, the discount in the uh, in the software price actually uh, the client is met with a transition charge or something. Of course, there is a transition, and there are uh, quite a lot of tasks associated with that. Uh, but we rarely see that this is actually bridged in a uh, in, a, in a good way. Some of the big clients very actively uh, uh, drive this sort of discussion uh, and that's also because the discounts are pretty significant when, when you have a certain amount of MSUs. Uh, the important thing for small vendors to understand is that most of the big outsourcers will have 
well, anywhere from 20,000 and they may, maybe up to hundreds of, of thousands of nits. And that means that most of them will have a, uh, some of the higher bands of, of MSUs uh, that they're actually uh, paying for. So in this particular setup, being small, uh, ha maybe uh, having a thousand or two thousand or three thousand nips, um, um, uh, this particular discount relates to all of the clients across the entire platform. So if you're running on a, in a shared environment, well then uh, you'll probably not get the full discount, but there is a, a case to be made for, for investigating whether you should have some of that. Um, yeah, we have a few more examples, but this is just uh, highlighting the, the point from before that that uh, uh, that some of these vendors, uh, uh, this is a, a, an IBM and, and every case where the interpretation, when there is lack of clarity around the, uh, the metric, uh, actually equates to the 99.6 uh, percentile. And that means that actually you're, you're, you're pretty much paying for the, maybe not the absolute peak, but the second to last one. Uh, and that is not a fair way of, of approaching the, the, uh, the consumption data. So, so uh, the, the, the consumption side tends to be isolated and that's also the purpose of this uh, seminar today is sort of bridging that gap to, uh, to Steven and the SMT team uh, to just make sure that there is a price discussion that's closely linked to the consumption. Um, yeah, then there is, in terms of the rating, and I'll just mention that because that's, it's pretty important that, that you understand that as well. Uh, the, the rating of the mainframe has a big impact on, on, uh, uh, on the total price. Uh, so so um, getting that right and whether you're talking about an interpretation of the IBM LSPR tables or Gartner or, uh, uh, or Watson tables, uh, that has a huge impact. And some of these are actually, I mean, we'll see uh, the example on the, on the far right, uh, the vendor has a uh, sort of scaling of the number of MIPS you get per MSU. Uh, and that is the part, typically the client just sees the, the MIPS consumption. Uh, they, not all clients at least have full transparency on, on the MSUs. Uh, so just understanding what, what is happening in that step is critical uh, and especially once you're changing technology from set 13 to 14 or 15 there is changes to this and of course uh, well we trust our vendors but in some instances uh, control is better so so uh, just make sure that you understand what is happening from the MSU level to the MIPS level and whether that is reflected by what you actually have in your contract otherwise uh, we sort of saying this because there's been quite a lot of um, yeah. Cases where, where vendor and, and, and clients have clashed over this because there was not enough, uh, not sufficient clarity in the contract around how this, this uh, should be going. Um, yeah. Um, and then, of course, I mean, the, the, uh, when you sort of have an overview of that, uh, we generally spend quite a lot of time on, on uh, outlining how, how should you approach the, the negotiation strategy, uh, making sure that, that uh, uh, vendors are approached in a in a structured way, but also that, that any position we have is a reasonable one. Uh, uh, of course, there will be uh, areas where we'll, we'll, we'll try to push as hard as we can, but generally it's not a good idea to, to, uh, to push hard against structural things you can't change. So just making sure you spend, spend your negotia negotiation efforts in the right way is, uh, is critical. Um, I think we, we uh, uh, wanted to, to leave a bit of room for, uh, for Q&A at the end. Uh, so, so um, uh, without further ado, I think I'll, I'll invite uh, Stephen uh, to the stage, but just leaving you with uh, uh, the consideration that, that uh, separating and, and, and deconstructing your, your, uh, your mainframe pricing uh, is important and that the uh, micro negotiations you'll have at various, uh, for various cost drivers add up to quite a lot of money. Uh, and we generally see that as clients have um, uh, smaller and smaller teams uh, uh, related to operating the mainframe. Uh, a lot of the knowledge is lost. So make sure you uh, make sure you investigate when when it's uh, time to, to renegotiate your contract, uh, and make sure that it's a transparent process for for the vendor as well. It makes it much easier to agree to to any concessions that might uh, need to be on on price uh, or terms.